Welcome to Reseller Madness. I'm Will, I buy things locally and sell them online for a profit, and I show you how to do it. Video games are my favorite niche. I've been buying and selling them longer than any other niche, and it can be super fun and profitable if you know what you're doing. Whether you plan to collect, or just play them, or buy and sell them for a profit, I wanna help you buy the good stuff and steer away from the bad. Today we're looking at the Microsoft Xbox, the original home console from Microsoft. It has a large, heavy, boxy case with ridges, and you'll notice the big Xbox logo right there on the front. If there was any doubt, the sticker right there on the bottom will clear that up for you. These come in a couple different colors. By far the most common is black. I've occasionally seen the Halo Edition in green or orange, Crystal Blue Edition, Mountain Dew Yellow, and Clear. Those rare colors and limited edition consoles go for a nice premium over the regular black ones, sometimes two, three, or four times as much. These are hardy systems. Most of the ones I find are in working order. Be on the lookout for boxes. The boxes are rare and can add plenty of value to the system. A complete system will have the box, console, cords, controller, manual, warranty card, advertisements, baggies, foam inserts, and sometimes a game. A box will also tell you that the owner took really good care of the system and treated it well. Systems that are treated well tend to last a lot longer. Complete in-box sets are hard to find, so I focus on selling consoles that are complete with all the necessary parts. They move quicker than partial sets or a la carte pieces. The Xbox needs a power cord, an AV cord, and a controller. When I sell a console with the cords and the controller all together, I get fewer returns, and that's because all the parts are tested and they work together. There's no guesswork needed at all. Microsoft OEM cords are preferred, but the third-party cords are plentiful and work just as well. This here is a multi-AV cord. It goes to a bunch of different systems. I find these all the time. The output on it is a RCA red, yellow, white, as well as a S-Video connector right there. These are very common and work very well. They just can't be sold as an OEM set. The power cord also. Generic ones work perfectly fine. You just have to make sure you got the right connector. The Xbox uses the rounded connector, not the half round, half square type like the PlayStation. Memory cards are often found in the controller in the memory card slots right there. Microsoft made their own OEM cards and then there's third party ones just like these. They both seem to work equally well. I haven't found any difference in performance between Microsoft ones and third party ones. Memory cards are not necessary for the Xbox to function. They're just used to save your game. They're a useful accessory and add a small amount of value to the system. It's not a big deal if the system doesn't have one. They sell fine for me without them. Controllers have the distinctive Xbox logo on the front and rounded overall design. Their sticker on the back will help you identify the exact model. The only Microsoft controllers I see are wired. I think Logitech made one that was wireless, but I've never actually seen it in the wild. I always see the wired ones. And the cord is actually two parts. This little connector is important. Without it, your controller will not plug into the console. When I find controllers, they're usually this black variety here. There were a few limited edition colors that turn up on a rare occasion. What I see much more often are the third party controllers like Mad Cats and Nyko. They don't have the trademark logo, they feel lighter and cheaper. And the third party Xbox controllers are known to be lower quality than the OEM ones. They broke easily and are generally unreliable. I stick to the Microsoft controllers because they're more reliable and therefore more profitable. When I'm checking over the system, I'll ask, did this work last time you used it? When was the last time you used it? Does the CD tray eject okay? Does it make any noises? Does it overheat? Has it ever crashed? Are there any parts that are damaged? Is it modded? If the seller doesn't remember the last time they used it, I offer parts price because that's a 50-50 gamble that it works. Sometimes people forget that it was broken. I also make sure the necessary parts are present. I want the console, I want the power cord, I want the AV cord, and I want the controller. When the console is all by itself, no cords, no controllers, no games, I take that as a clear indicator that there's something wrong with it. It stopped working and the seller sold off the good parts and kept the broken console because they didn't know what to do with it. Some things are negotiable. I'm okay with scratches, scuffs, stickers, some dust, or writing. That kind of thing's normal on older systems. Sun damage or fading isn't unusual. It's also not uncommon to be missing a cord. Cords are cheap and easily replaceable. Mildly dusty vents are normal. So then what would be some deal breakers? Some things I absolutely will not buy. When a seller says it overheats, is too noisy, doesn't work, I'll pass on it. If the tamper seals have been cut, 
if there are pry marks showing it was popped open, if the screws are stripped out or missing, damage around the CD tray. That means CD got stuck and someone tried to pry it open. CD drives can go bad eventually, but there's no way to test them at most yard sales. I have to rely on what I see and what the seller says about it. Damage controller ports mean the console may not be playable. Most of the time, these indicate that the console is toast. There's much more money in working consoles than in broken ones. While I do sell broken ones for parts, I do not purposely buy them. Sometimes I get them thrown in for free with another purchase. I also skip consoles with big dents or cracks in the case resulting from being dropped. Take a good look at the vents. If the vents are thickly caked with dust, that's a sign it has or probably will overheat. Spills in general are not a good sign. The Xbox is pretty well designed to resist spills. There's not a lot of vents in the tops where liquid could get in. I still check the bottom for rust or signs of liquid that came out. That's something that would tip me off that I do not want to deal with this system. Modded systems are loaded with emulators and full of bootleg game files from all different systems. They often do not play discs anymore. There are tons of them on the market, technically illegal to sell. Let your conscience be your guide. I stay away. Freight cords are another thing to look out for. The most common place that the cord will go bad is right next to the plug. I also look for tape on the cords, electrical tape, abrasions, chew marks, cracks, and bent plugs. All of these things are a hard no from me. Damaged power cords are a huge safety problem and may indicate further damage inside the console. Mold, bugs, and bad smells, I walk away. On the controller, a busted thumbstick is a deal breaker to me. When there's only a small amount of damage, it may still be acceptable and I may be able to sell it. Keep in mind all damage needs to be disclosed to the buyer in the listing. The part where the cord meets the controller takes a lot of stress and is often the first place the cord breaks, so I pass on controllers with any damage here. If it's missing the adapter on the end, I'll pay little or nothing for the controller because I'm going to have to buy another adapter to make this a usable controller. Thumbsticks should be tight with no play in them and they shouldn't flop around. There should be no grit in them and they shouldn't stick when you let go. A properly working thumbstick will move right back to center. Xbox games have the green cases with the old Xbox logo across the top. In my store, the demand for them has fallen over the years. Some are still very valuable. If you're not familiar with the games, open up the eBay app, scan the barcode on the back. Make sure to click only show sold listings. Otherwise, you'll see what sellers are asking, not what they're actually getting you'll start to get a sense of which games to pick up and which games to skip. I focus on items I can triple my money on. In general, Japanese-style RPGs, anime titles, collector's editions, Capcom titles, hard-to-find titles like Def Jam, Fatal Frame, or Silent Hill. I also look for steelbooks. Here's one that has a metal case rather than a plastic one. They're usually collector's editions. Some have extra content, possibly DLC. They may have uh, expanded manual, maps, or other things. An important note about downloadable content is that somewhere around 2010, Microsoft dropped support for the online functions for the Xbox. So you can no longer play multiplayer online through Xbox servers, nor can you download any DLC uh, via the code cards that you get in the games, even if the card was never used. So those code cards are really just collector's pieces now, and they're important to collectors, but I can't advertise the actual item itself as having any DLC available. Something I love doing with games is bundling them. In this case, I have Halo 2 and the Halo 2 Strategy Guide. I can bundle these two together, and it'll probably go for about the same price as if I sold them separately, maybe even a little less. More importantly, though, it'll get them out the door that much faster. Buyers love getting bundles on things they can use together. They fly out the door for me. My most important metric is sales velocity. If I held a game for 20 years and made 20 bucks on it, that's not too exciting. If I held it for two days and I made 17, that's much, much better. Get in the habit of finding ways to add value. Anybody can put up one single game on eBay. Not everybody thinks to list a strategy guide with their game or even bundle a second game with it. Game titles I'm just not excited about sports titles, hockey, football, soccer, baseball. The demand for these drops rapidly after the first year. Every bargain bin in every video game store is full of old sports titles. While there's always exceptions, the general rule for me is to avoid old sports games. If I have them, I bundle them and other really cheap games with a console. Before I buy, I always check the case. Sometimes the game is missing. Most of the time when that happens, the game is nowhere to be found. On occasion, the disc is in the console, so it's always worth checking there. I also look around. Sometimes the disc is nearby. Other times the case is simply empty and there's no game. A few cases are worth a bit of money even without the game. Most are not. I don't pay for an empty case. I get those thrown in for free. 
What can go wrong with games? The biggest thing is scratches. Make sure it's not too scratched to play. Take a good look at the bottom of the disc. If it's all scratched up, it's probably not going to play. Some discs can be repaired, but it's always iffy. I prefer discs that are not in need of repair. The bottom side is the only side that can be repaired because it is thick, protective plastic. The label side has the data layer, and once that side is scratched, the data is gone. There's no way to fix it. If you see a cracked CD, that's a pass. The other type of defect that cannot be repaired is disc delamination. That's the layers of the disc starting to separate. Nothing you can do for that. Ring-shaped scratches mean it was scratched while it was playing, most commonly caused by moving the console while the disc spins. These are usually very deep scratches and very difficult to repair. Nine out of ten times, they're toast. It can clue you in that the console's drive might be damaged too. When I find a game that's valuable and all scratched up, I take it to a video game store. For a few bucks, they use their professional disc resurfacers to polish all the scratches out. Paying a couple bucks so I make $40 or more on a game is good business. I do not recommend buying a cheap disc resurfacer from your local department store. Those will destroy the discs and not repair them. If you're working with a large volume of discs, consider an entry-level resurfacer in the $150 plus range. Watch out for counterfeit or reproduction games. RPRO is the common abbreviation. The shiny new looking game that's 20 years old, colors off, case isn't quite right, it's smart to try and verify the authenticity. The more expensive the game, more likely is that the counterfeits of it are circulating. When a game is missing a case in the manual, its value will be dramatically lower. We're talking half or less. And it's much harder to sell. Always try to get complete games when possible. They sell much easier and faster. As for Xbox accessories, they're worth looking up when you find them. Remote controls are another common accessory I find. You could play DVDs on the Xbox with these. They're not very valuable, so I often lump them together with the console. You need the receiver in order for it to work though, so make sure you've got both pieces. And watch out for the battery cover on the back. A lot of times they're missing that, and it's a lot tougher to sell without the battery cover. It'll still work, but the battery will fall out. Anytime I buy something with batteries, I always check the battery compartment just in case it's all corroded, because if it's corroded, I walk away from that accessory. Steering wheels sometimes turn up. Most are third-party ones with somewhat poor build quality. I mostly avoid them. Plastic construction is cheap. Metal is much better. Never hurts to look up the comps on them, though. These are good general guidelines. There's never a guarantee that items I buy will work, but sticking to these guidelines helps me avoid costly mistakes. When I play it smart, I win way more often than I lose. I find my video games mostly at yard sales, and I've had some good pickups at thrift stores, swap meets, and even the local online marketplace like Facebook and Craigslist. It's difficult to buy on eBay or Amazon and to flip on the same platform. Not impossible, but I wouldn't spend my time trying. Sometimes friends and family have free games for you, so it doesn't hurt to ask around if you're just starting out. Now for the elephant in the room. I didn't go over prices and values on any of this stuff. There's a good reason, too. Prices change on a daily basis. Something worth $20 today is worth $60 tomorrow or vice versa. The moment I start calling out prices, this video would be obsolete. As you get to know the niche, you'll develop an eye for value. If you're super curious about current prices, try pricecharting.com. I'll put a link in the description. My general rule is that every dollar I spend needs to return $3 to cover my costs and allow a profit margin. I may accept a lower return on expensive, fast-moving items. This all may seem like a lot of info to process before buying a system. In real time, though, I can spot most fatal flaws in the system within the first 15 seconds, and in 60 or 90 seconds, I've decided whether to buy or walk. With practice, reaching a profitable decision can be very quick. I'll finish with this. There's a lot of fun games on the Xbox. My all-time favorite game is Burnout 3 Takedown. Blazing fast arcade style racing mode with an emphasis on causing your opponents to crash. In crash mode, you cause the biggest car crashes you can and tally up the damage. Total madness. Simple and fun. The kind of thing you can play for as little as 15 minutes and have a great time. Okay, I think that's enough of the Xbox. Let's go to the bonus round. The bonus round is where I share my hottest selling items, including the buy cost and the sold price. If you want to get profitable quick, sell what I'm selling. Vintage Ninja Turtle pencil toppers, $2 into $75. Hawaii Five-O DVD set, $5 into $89. Dark Cloud for PS2, $3 into $40. Combat DVD set, $5 into $60. G.I. Joe loose figure, freebie into $29. Fire Emblem for Wii, $5 into $135. Pokemon Retired Plush, 50 cents into 27 bucks. Vintage Christmas ornaments, 6 into 85. Box hatchets, $5 into 70. 
Bear Vault Camping Container, $5 into 81. Anime Lot, $4 into 81. Brass Candlestick Lot, 15 into 151, but shipping was pretty pricey on that. Monkey Island for BC, French, $1 into 40. Air Force Yearbooks, freebies into 50 bucks. Wagon Train TV Show, $1 into 84. Adidas Windbreaker, $1 into 55. Metallica CD Set, $3 into 64. Hit Clips, $5 into 75. Amazon Echo Dot, $5 into 32. Embroider Jacket, freebie into 36 bucks. Mega Blocks Ships, free after a yard sale was over, $149. Now I'd love to hear from you. Tell me down in the comments below. Are you a collector, mostly looking to play the Xbox, or you want to flip them for cash? Either way, I hope you got lots of value out of this video. Also, tell me in the comments, which system do you want me to do next? Thank you so much for watching. This is Reseller Madness with Will.